This right here is the scale 118 Ferrari 365 GTS 4, also known as the Ferrari Daytona. This particular model is made by Hot Wheels Mattel, not the upper end Hot Wheels Elite, the lower end kind of budget version. And it's actually one of the very few uh, Ferrari Daytonas that are currently being sold in the model world. One being um, released by, I believe, Kyosho. And of that, of course, is a much more expensive model, roughly $100 or so. This being a budget car, roughly $45. Not exactly a bargain as far as budget cars go, but considering this is a Ferrari, it's a pretty good price because it, due to Ferrari's licensing costs, it's, it's pretty outrageous. You don't get many uh, budget cars that are Ferraris anyway. So let's get started on the detail here. Now if you're looking to get this car, as it's pretty tough to find at this point. I believe it was discontinued. But if you're lucky, you could probably find it on eBay or some stores that still might have back stock of it. Um, it's a really nice model. Really gives you a nice look of the car. And despite it having some lack of detail that the, the Elite would have um, much better, it's still pretty good. And it's a very, very nice piece to have sitting on your, on your nightstand or, or your display cabinet. It really is quite nice. So let's get started on the detail here. First, I want to mention that everything does open. No suspension, however, the wheels do turn with the steering wheel. Although not really that well, but that's okay. It's, they at least do it. An important thing to note about the budget version of Hot Wheels Mattel is that a lot of the times they use plastic pieces to get the price down. This is not the case. This is actually an exception. This is metal, this is metal, and so is that, which would normally would be plastic. Same thing with that Ferrari 458 that I showed in an earlier video. And it really shows because this car is very heavy. It's actually one of the heaviest I have. Um, I do, it's not mine, but I have uh, borrowed a car, um, a Pontiac GTO. That's the only car that I have, and that's by Motormax, um, that's heavier than this as far as other than say a Cadillac Escalade which is just massive considering the size of this it's a pretty good weight. There are many colors for the, the GTS4. GTS standing for of course um, Spider instead of the coupe version. So it's it's kind of a rare model indeed. On the front end we can see that it's got Decent detail. It's got chrome on the outlines of the grill, as well as um, what appears to go in, um, but not really. It's actually just plastic behind there. You really don't even notice it because it's pretty well done. Chrome throughout here. Not the highest quality chrome I've seen. It has started to chip away, and even around the doors um, where your fingers touch, I actually had to use Sharpie to kind of fill it in because it was starting to look really bad. The chrome around here as well. And continuing with chrome on, on the back side. This here is mine. It comes with no license plate whatsoever. Nice Ferrari logo there, embossed on. Headlights. Now, uh, a very important thing to note that this is actually the correct uh, setup for rear tail lights. Oftentimes, when this car is is restored, um, they accidentally put the taillights in the wrong place so they're reversed. So you have the um, the turn signal, the orange light here and the red there. So this is absolutely correct. One thing that I'm not sure is correct and I would, if there's any Ferrari enthusiasts out there that know the answer to this, I would be happy um, to listen. I'm not quite sure why this front end is this silver color. It looks really nice. It's a nice accent to the rest of the car. But I can't quite figure it out. I have seen that this is a 1971 model, or at least I think it is. And But in all the pictures I've seen, the only ones I've, that have this are coupes. And that was, I think, maybe one picture. So I'm not quite sure why that is. But nevertheless, I'd probably... Uh, delving too deep into this model anyway. Engine detail. It's missing a little bit of color around here. You can see the battery. Um, and one thing that I notice is that the carburetors, while they do have really nice detail, I mean you can see there's, there's a good chunk of them there, 
it kind of blends in with the rest of the engine which is also the same color and I don't know if, how accurate that would be it just it it loses some of something about it oops I wouldn't recommend slamming it down like that it can cause the paint to chip you can see there's a nice heat shield some parts are carried over from the elite model and that's why you get these random spots that are very well done Another spot that's very well done is the seats. You can see, got the individual. Um, these are the original Daytona seats um, that Ferrari put in. Sometimes they carry it over on into even their newer cars. And detail in the interior, lacking a little bit behind uh, where the gauge cluster is. It's just one sticker with a little bit of uh, fake wood grain behind it. On the steering wheel, same thing, tried to make it look a little wood grain. It's actually just some orange paint that they put around it. Not super realistic, but hey, at least they did it. Considering this is a $45 Ferrari, it's not too bad. Now some some uh, these buttons that you see colored in are actually uh, me, which I used a metallic Sharpie. For the most part, when I got this car, everything was black. It was kind of disappointing on the interior not quite worth $45 not a bad not a bad door panel there see the speaker system that was as it is pretty small trunk these wheels very nicely done. I believe they're called Borelli. Correct me if I'm wrong, any Ferrari enthusiasts out there. And underneath we have a slew of mufflers, one, two, three, six, or um, eight in total. Not quite sure why they do that, just to make the car quieter, I guess. But anyway, not too much detail. Uh, we can see that everything is for the most part, just part of uh, the underbody. Nothing's raised other than the exhaust, of course. Drive shaft connected to the, the, plastic, the black plastic under there. And we can see here that this was actually released in 1998, which is, makes this a pretty old model. And that would indicate that it's pretty tough to find at this time. But it is possible if you look for it. All right, so that is oh one last note. This these are legit vents. You can go all the way through, so it's not nothing fake there. Pretty good. So overall, really nice looking model. Uh, has some slight quality flaws due to the lack of detail, uh, cost cutting, but overall pretty good. Forty five dollars you're getting a Ferrari Daytona. There's nothing wrong with that. So. Overall, I would recommend it. And that's all. Thanks for watching.